Today we're checking out the Behringer Composer Pro XL MDX 2600. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel folks, my name's Shane. So today we're checking out the Pro XL MDX 2600. I'm gonna not only show you how it sounds, I'm gonna show you what's in the box, who it's for and why I actually purchased it. So let's do a quick, very quick unboxing. I'll leave some time codes below if you wanna skip ahead. So let's do it. We get some instructions and a sticker, and then we get the unit itself, and on the back is attached a power cable. So let's open this up. Here's the unit up close, and this is actually a dual channel processor, which is why I wanted it. I recently purchased a DBX286S, which is a single channel microphone preamp and processor. This is kind of the same thing, but without the preamp. Being that I already have one with the UltraGain Pro, we're gonna do a comparison coming up on the channel between them both, but today's video will focus on this, how it sounds, so let's set it up and give it a go. I'm tipping if you're already looking at the composer, you might already have one of these Behringer UltraGain Pro preamps. The interesting thing about them in terms of the size is the composer is way smaller and it's nice and light and it's built exactly the same in terms of how they feel and the build quality and all that kind of stuff, so no problems there at all. I'm probably gonna run the composer on top of the UltraGain Pro like this. And that will be not only a dual channel microphone preamp system now, but also a dual channel processor. So it should give me all the functionality of my DBX back there in a dual channel setup, which is perfect for having two people over for, for a podcast or three if I include the other one. So yeah, this is awesome. Let's see how it sounds. And now over to the all important sound test. The microphone I'm using is the Rode Procaster. The preamp we're using is the UltraGain Pro. Going through the composer, straight to my audio interface, which is the Steinberg UR22 MK2. Now I've actually got the composer currently off, so this is the kind of sound quality you can get just by using the preamp. And this is now with the unit on. And yes, it does allow the signal to pass through when it's currently off. One of the huge advantages of this particular unit is it actually has a power button. Uh, that same can't be said for the 286S from DBX. I don't know why there's no power button on that, but this one has a power button. And I'll turn it back off so you can hear how it sounds again, just flat. Now, there's nothing wrong with this audio, but as you can sort of hear now, it sounds a little more muffled. And I'll tell you why. There's actually two buttons on the front of the composer that make everything sound great. So let's take a look at those. The two buttons that really bring the mojo to the Composer Pro XL are these two right here, the tube and enhance button. So if I was to turn these off, this is how it sounds. So as you can hear, it's nowhere near as bright and it's a lot more boomy on the low end as well. So to get rid of that and to also bring the top end back, simply push these in. This should just stay on. In my opinion, it sounds much, much better with those two buttons on. I don't think there's a valve in here at all. There is one in obviously or a valve or tube in this one down here. I don't know how much that's doing either, but in terms of how this sounds and what I like, the, those buttons on definitely deliver the goods. One of the standout things on this is the compressor and limiter. So what this will do, you can see the red lights coming backwards this way. And if I stop talking, they'll all light up. So when I'm talking, it's actually reducing the gain, which means I'm close enough to the microphone where the compressor is actually pulling the loud parts back but it's also boosting up the quiet parts, giving you a very constant audio signal, which means it's really pleasing for the listener. They don't have to fiddle around with the volume controls on their phone if they're listening to, say, a podcast or something like that, or on their speakers on their computer. It will just sound very consistent in terms of what kind of audio level you'll get captured on your recording device. Pretty cool. One of the things I wanted to point out about the Composer Pro XL that gave me a little bit of grief was the noise gate. It is working, as you can hear. But one of the things is getting it right was also tricky depending on how close or far away you are from the microphone. So I've set it so it just sort of basically kicks in when I'm not doing anything. So if I was to turn it all the way down, you can hear the background noise and all that kind of stuff. But if I was just turn it up one, nothing. It's just kicked in now, right? But I want just a little bit more so it doesn't pick up accidental noises in the room. If I was to turn it another one, it would start to almost cut out my voice. So you just want to make sure you get the gate right, get your signal from your preamp at the right level as well. 
make sure when you're sending it to the computer, it's not clipping or doing anything it shouldn't be doing on that side as well. Or if you're recording to an external recorder, same thing, just make sure the levels are all safe. So please let me know what you think of the audio quality in the comments below. What I think I'm hearing sounds pretty good to my ear, but let me know in the comments what you think. I'll put a screen capture or something of my settings. So if you wanna use those exact same settings, if you've got the same microphone, feel free to give them a go and let me know your experience. If you prefer to set up the composer in a different way, let people know in the comments as well and I'll pin the most relevant post. If you want to find out more about this, I'll put some links to B&H in the US down in the description below as well. So coming up, like I mentioned, the shootout between the DBX and this is coming up. And we'll also test it with a couple of different microphones as well, including the pod mic and also the Procaster. So come back for more. Thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. I'll catch you on the next video. See ya. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and click the bell for video notifications.